In one week, it is safe to say we see hundreds of advertisements. We constantly hear politicians explain why they are the best candidate for the job. We may even try to convince our friends or family why we should eat dinner before going to a movie, or why it's someone else's turn to drive. Persuasion surrounds us in hundreds of ways every day. Understanding what persuasion is can impact how we do on an interview, whether or not we get a date, or maybe even why we deserve a better grade. The purpose of this lesson is to gain a better understanding of what persuasion is. We will first consider the goals of persuasion, so we can move on to understanding how persuasion is based on one of three questions, and finally, address the role an audience plays in persuasive messages. The fundamental goal of persuasion is to create change, but specifically there are three areas of change that people try to influence, and those are changes in attitudes, beliefs, or behaviors. An attitude is the frame of mind one has in favor or opposed to a person, policy, belief, institution, and so on. Perhaps a good example of this would be the politically charged radio talk shows that evaluate current events and the actions of politicians in Washington. The goals of those shows isn't necessarily to produce some sort of action within the listeners, but really to create a certain attitude. A belief, on the other hand, refers to the perception of the truth or falsity of a given proposition. My favorite example of this are the conspiracy theorists who believe things like we didn't land on the moon or there are alien autopsies happening at Area 51. There isn't any specific action that people want others to take in response to this information, but they definitely want their listeners to believe that this is the truth. Finally, persuading someone to change their behavior means motivating the audience into taking or committing to some kind of action. These extremes can be extraordinary, like joining a movement or changing a lifestyle, but they can also be really subtle, like changing how you consume certain things or what you buy in the store. Sometimes speakers might want to change more than one of these particular goals as a result of their persuasion speech. But regardless of what the goals of your persuasion are, a persuasion topic is typically going to be based on one of three questions. Questions of fact, questions of value, or questions of policy. A question of fact is a question about the truth or falsity of an assertion. Oftentimes, lawyers find themselves having to persuade juries about certain facts of the case, this does not mean there is no dispute over that. Sometimes people think the word fact means that it is completely true and there is no way to refute it. But in questions of fact, there might be disputing evidence on both sides as to what truly happened. Questions of fact can also be categorical or causal. Categorical claims are those that make claims as to what is or is not. Whereas causal claims are ones that determine what caused the next thing to happen and what was the effect. The second question is a question of value, and it is a question about the worth, rightness, morality, and so forth of ideas or actions. For instance, your purpose might be to convince an audience that one or another of the presidents were the best president or worst president of all time, without necessarily indicating who ought to be the next president or who they should vote for in any particular election. Third are questions of policy. This is a question about whether a specific course of action should or should not be taken. Questions of policy must address three issues. First, need. Is there a problem or need that requires change from current policy? Two, plan. Once you have shown a problem exists, you must explain your plan for solving it. And three, practicality. Ask whether or not the plan will actually solve the problem. And also ask, will it create more issues and problems than it solves? Even though you may correctly identify the goals and questions of your persuasion speech, remember that you are still speaking in front of an audience, and the ultimate goal is to change that audience. Humans have a natural tendency to resist change. As a persuasive speaker, you must focus on reasons the audience must change. 
there are three types of audience members to consider. First, the audience member that already agrees with your position. Your goal is to intensify and solidify their attitude. Notice that you're not necessarily creating change in this particular audience member, but you still could influence their attitude with your message. Second is the audience member that is neutral or undecided. This is where you want most of your audience to fall. Some people think that you want most people to agree with you beforehand, or that you want to focus most of your energy on the people that disagree with you. But you really want to focus your energy on the undecided audience members. With them, you must get the audience sufficiently interested and present unbiased background. But this doesn't mean that you ignore people that disagree with you. The audience member that already disagree with your position, your goal with this is to hope that they ask more questions. Only slight change can be expected. You don't need 100% agreement amongst all of your audience members at the end of your speech. That is an unreasonable goal to set. Ultimately, what you're trying to do is create change toward the direction that you're asking people to go. We have considered the goals of persuasion so we could move on to understanding how persuasion is based on one of three questions and finally address the role an audience plays in persuasive messages. Understanding persuasion is going to help you in life in more ways than just for a classroom assignment. With this understanding of persuasion, you may be able to get more of what you want. Persuasion is everywhere. Therefore, it's important that we can recognize it so we can use its components in our everyday lives.